Draugi, liels paldies, ka esat atpakaļ. Ok, friends, thank you very much for returning. Now we will switch to English. Those uh, who want to listen in English, um, they can listen in English, and those in Latvian, in Latvian. The <laughs> sea. So this is my greeting to, to our good colleagues uh, from uh, Sweden. And both of you, actually, should I congratulate, you just uh, received a special uh, European Commission's uh, Access City Award uh, for 2021, isn't it? Uh, and it was given to Yenchiping, uh, the commune uh, that was uh, so successful into this uh, spatial planning. Uh, uh, so you did a miracle. We want to see your miracles, so maybe even to copy-paste them. Uh, so please share with us, uh, both of you. Here I welcome uh, Christine Andersen and also Julia Zederbrandt, please. Thank you, and thank you for inviting us to this conference. I hope you all had a, a good break. Yes, we did. <laughs> uh, so, uh, last year, uh, as you could hear, Yuan Shiping won the Access City Award, uh, which is awarded by the European Commission to a city that has been working with accessibility for its citizens, and especially citizens with disabilities. And we will now speak about some of the reasons why we won, and how we uh, try to systemize decision making into what you can call accessibility mainstreaming and some of the more specific projects aiming for more accessibility. And my name is Kristin Andreasen and I'm a strategist in sustainability at the Jönköping Municipality. Okay, and to give you uh, a background about our organization, uh, it was uh, a Jönköping town that won the award, and uh, I'm represented from the municipality. So uh, we want to give you a background uh, about the Swedish municipalities. Uh, this is a picture of Sweden, and uh, Sweden consists of 290 municipalities. And municipalities are responsible for most of the social services available where we live. Uh, the most extensive services include schools, social services, and care for the elderly. And almost 10,000 out of our uh, 12,000 employees works within these services. And Swedish municipalities are obliged to provide some services, while others are optional and decided by local politicians. Uh, the municipality has the right to make independent decisions and tax citizens to finance its activities. Uh, this is an image uh, where I try to illustrate how we have been working with a bottom-up approach within the organization around accessibility and uh, disability issues. Uh, we have been working with other targeted groups like children and gender equality and so forth, but here I will try to focus on uh, only this group. In Jönköping, we have a strong civil rights society. There is an umbrella organization which consists of around 20 associations uh, regarding different disabilities and diagnoses uh, called Jönköping Disability Rights Federation. And they have been our main partner and it's them I will refer to when I talk about civil rights society and people with first-hand experience of disabilities. We have a political program for accessibility issues called a society for all and when we created this program all the departments and politicians uh, on all levels were involved as well as the represent from the disability organizations uh, and in this program we set up a system for how we wanted to work with involvement from civil rights societies the municipal council disability issues as you can see on the top of the hierarchy in this slide uh, I think they have ex existed since the 70s, actually. Uh, in this council, politicians from all the departments meet uh, representatives from the civil rights societies, and here the citizens have an opportunity to raise accessibility issues directly with the politicians and to educate uh, politicians about disabilities. The planning and development department have been working out a system to include the disability organizations in their processes, so the department have their specific council to talk more about concrete issues, for example, uh, what is being built, road, parks and pedestrian crossings and so forth. And my colleague Julia uh, will talk more about the, the specific project that they are working with. Uh, in this specific council, um, uh, represent from the civil rights organizations, 
uh, can come in with their first-hand experience of disabilities. And we have seen that the earlier citizens come into our processes, the easier it is to affect the result and how important it is uh, to have people with first-hand experience uh, when we are building an accessible city. We have tried to copy this concept <clears throat> that the planning and development department have into the other departments. We have eight departments in this slide I'm showing for, uh, just to make examples. So the social service department have their social council and the educational department have their educational department and so uh, uh, educational council and so forth. Uh, we have learned also during the years uh, that we need to work constantly on our communication between us, the municipality, and the Jönköping Disability Rights Federation. And one thing uh, that we did was to make a contract between us uh, uh, partners uh, to make it more clear what to expect from each other. Um, and we also need to break down uh, information uh, to make it more understandable for the citizens. We cannot just say, hey, join our decision making. We need to be more clear about uh, what the limits and frames are and inform uh, citizens about the common processes in an early stage uh, so that we can benefit from each other. Uh, the disability organizations also put a lot of effort in, uh, uh, for example, learning about the new laws about, around accessibility, which uh, we have a lot of now uh, nowadays, actually. And uh, in this way, uh, they can be a really good resource for us, and we can really trust their judgment when we are uh, having the councils. Uh, I will now leave the floor to, to my colleague Julia from the Planning and Development Department. Hi, my name is Julia Sjedebrandt and I work as a strategic traffic planner at the Planning and Development Department in the municipality of Jönköping. I'm here today to talk about what the Planning and Development Department does on accessibility and also to show you some concrete examples. So much of our work is connected to our city environment program, which has the purpose to ensure that Jönköping develops as a beautiful, exciting and functional city. In the process of developing this program, both representatives from local businesses and from Jönköping Disability Rights Federation were involved. And to this main program, we have several sub-programs as well, where one is called the Accessible City. This part of the city environment program deals with what regulations we have to consider uh, in urban planning when it comes to accessibility and then a large part of it also consists of guidelines on how to build specific sections and functions in the city in an accessible way. So one example is um, one example is uh, the use of standard drawings of, for example, road crossings, playground, ground covers and bus stops. Um, and to show you a more concrete example, here we have worked with our standard drawings when rebuilding a road crossing or several road crossings near a new roundabout. The standard drawings make sure that we build in an accessible way, and in this case, including a narrowing of the road to uh, slow traffic down. We also use tactile paving before, during and after a crossing. We always make sure to have a lowered curbstone for easy access and we always put out ballers on each side of the road uh, and these are just a few examples as you can see we have a long list but when building according to one of these standard drawings we make sure that accessibility is always accounted for in all our projects um, and on our municipality website, we have a page that is devoted to accessibility matters, where we, for example, have put up a map made in collaboration with Jönköping Disability Rights Federation on accessible businesses. And this is basically an inventory of all downtown businesses and how accessible they are from different perspectives. The map is available for everyone online. And it also has a program that is included in the map that reads the map content out loud in order to create access for visually impaired people. And further on this web page, there is also a suggestion box 
where we encourage inhabitants to fill out if they discover a place that is not accessible for some perspective. Uh, and this gives us a chance to find out about this and to uh, do something about it. And at the same page, we have also put up an information video and a checklist aimed at business owners in Jönköping on how they can adapt their locations to become more accessible. Um, and to do this, we have a local accessibility award with the goal to uh, encourage business owners to work more with accessibility. And we have been giving out this prize to companies and businesses since 2017. And inhabitants are the ones that nominates different companies and the winners are chosen by representatives from the municipal executive committee, municipal officials, and also by members from the Young Shopping Disability Rights Federation. And the focus on uh, accessibility for this award is quite broad. Uh, it looks at passability and information, but also on consideration of noise levels and different types of allergies, as well as general knowledge uh, of accessibility among the staff. And together with attention from media, there is also a cash prize for this award. We have also been working with accessibility in our forests and green areas. We think that it is important that everyone has the opportunity to visit a nature site and to perform outdoor activities regardless of functional status. However, it is also important to note that we don't expect all nature to be accessible for everyone. Therefore, some sites have been prioritized in this work, where paths within some of our nature areas have been made fully accessible. Green areas close to the city center are also prioritized since these tend to be more accessible to a larger amount of people. And we do this work since we know that spending time in parks and green areas uh, is an important well-being factor for everyone. And we have brought two pictures or images to illustrate some of our work. And the top uh, image shows a picnic table along one of our accessible paths that has been uh, made wheelchair accessible by extending both sides of the table with a free space underneath it in order for someone in a wheelchair to actually sit close up by the table with friends and family and enjoy the beautiful view out over Lake Vettan. And the second image shows a path that has been built out on a popular peatland destination here in Jönköping. And it is wheelchair accessible uh, with accessible resting spaces all along. It also is built with an outer border that is elevated, making it possible to navigate using a white stick, as well as it prevents wheelchair from accidentally falling off the path. And then lastly, I would like to tell you a little bit about a project that is in progress right now in Young Shipping, which we find quite exciting. And that is that we're working on extending our accessibility map to also include nature and recreational areas. And the different services within these areas will be color coded based on how accessible they are. And the purpose of this is for people to be informed already from home about the different sites and thereby select destinations based upon your individual needs. And I will hand over to Christine again. Right, thank you. So, uh, uh, we want to finish this speech uh, by talking about accessibility in a broader perspective. Because accessibility is not only what is physically planned or what we can see around us, it's also what's happening between us people and our norms about how we should look, act or functionality can create inaccessibility. Therefore, we think it's important to talk about norms. And Normstorm is a part of the municipality's work for diversity, equality and to create a more inclusive society. Normstorm allows students in high school to critically evaluate norms of their everyday life. And every year, students uh, aged 14 to 17 
uh, participate in this project uh, as a part of their regular education plan. Throughout the project, the students learn more about norms, especially destructive and discriminatory ones. And the students then interpret, question and challenge destructive norms of their choice through taking pictures, uh, as you can see here, or creating artworks when, uh, which are then uh, presented in a public exhibition uh, or in a public area. And the aim of Normstorm is to allow young people a voice in the public space and to affect society into discussing and challenging destructive norms. Okay, that was our presentation. We are ready for questions. Well, uh, thank you very much. But can I quickly ask what it gave to the local society? Do you see some reflection, something about this? Uh, uh, maybe you, I don't know if you noticed um, earlier today when uh, the local NGO talked, uh, Aperons we call them, they talked that it is not only about the regulation itself, so how nicely and strictly it was communicated, but it is more of environment, of an attitude of a wider society when you do these changes, these particular steps that you try to demolish, so put uh, the ramp uh, and, and whatever you try to do. If there is a full support always, or it uh, also provokes a big discussions inside society, which is actually maybe a good thing to have. Yeah, this, uh, if, if we talk about this project, Normstorm, uh, it is uh, uh, supposed to be uh, a bit provoking to, to people actually to, to start to discuss uh, norms and uh, about winning this award, uh, what is giving to, to the society. I think that uh, we, we have a stronger we feeling, so to speak, that we want this uh, together and all the hard work that, that the civil rights society put down uh, to making our city accessible for everyone has really uh, benefited everyone. Great. So I think uh, this is the whole idea of uh, benefits to everyone. So not to make uh, new uh, steps, but